What's up guys, Eve Business Insider back again to take a second look at using Google Docs for EVE Online spreadsheets. Uh, this is what we're going to be creating today is a more advanced version of Tradesheet 1.0 that we did in the last lesson. Uh, this time we've got some really nice drop down windows here so we can switch in between the buy and sell prices for different regions or different hubs. Uh, we've cleaned up the math a little bit, made it easier to scale. And we've got uh, another couple secrets inside here for you this episode as well. So stay tuned and we'll build this one up right from where we left off last episode. All right, what we've got here is pretty much a stock trade sheet version 1.0 like we built last time. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is jump right to here and I'm going to kill both of these uh, label fields right there. And then I'm going to kill both of those math cells as well. So we'll get back and fix those in just a minute. Next, we're going to pop over to the math tab. Then we need to create a few new fields. Number one, we need a field for the JITA address. We need a field for the Amar address. And we are also going to need a field over here that we're going to label and type ID equals and then so for our JITA address we're going to start our build it's going to look like HTTP uh, API.EVEONLINE exactly like this with the exception of instead of type ID at the end here we're going to use uh, use system and three four zeros one forty two for JITA then we're going to copy that over into the next one down here and we're going to go twenty one eighty seven for Amar uh, next, we're going to need to label some of these fields. Now, naming your regions is something that's going to help your spreadsheeting tremendously because it's going to allow you to reference based off of that name rather than based off a sheet and a cell location. So to do that, select the one you want. Come over here with a right click to name and protect range. We're going to name this top one Jita. And then we're going to add a second one for Amar. And a third one up here we're going to call Type ID. In fact, type ID just like that. Okay, next thing we need to do is build a couple of swap groups, uh, which we're going to use for our drop down menu. So, first we're going to label the uh, cell price swap group. And then we're going to copy and paste that over and make a buy price swap group as well. And we're going to have to create a little bit of math for this. But first, we need to make our. Uh, actual drop downs here. So to create the drop downs, what we need to do is specify the cell that you want to create and make a drop down. Actually, first before I do that, I'm going to kill this label there and I'm going to delete one row off of that. And you'll see why in a few minutes, but it's basically going to clean it up when I go to freeze the rows. So once again, to make the drop down, right click on the cell you want. Data validation is the option we need. Uh, you can leave the cell range here. What we want to pick from criteria is a list of items. And for our list, on the first one, we're going to go. Uh, Jita cell separated by a comma Amar cell uh, on invalid data reject the input and that's all we need we can save there we're gonna do the same thing over here except instead of cells we're gonna go with buys so Jita buy and Amar buy same thing reject input and that's good there and what this does is just creates only two options for you to click on it's gonna create one of those two is the entry for this cell and nothing else. So for now, we'll set them to G to buy and sell. And then we're going to name and protect these as well. This one is going to be called the cell drop down. And then we'll label this other one the buy drop down. And now we can reference these from back over here. So in our cell group, what we need to have in this center column here is a little bit of math. So it's going to be an if command. Whoops, there we go. Equals if. So we have test value, then value, otherwise value. So what we're going to do is go if cell drop down equals the string, and the string we want is g to cell. If it equals g to cell, comma, then value is going to be g to. Now this is referencing the cell that we named just above there, g to. And if it's not going to be that, then we want a second if command. And if it's not the first one, then if cell drop down equals, if it equals a mar cell, then we want to make it a mar. And on the second if command, if it's not either of those, then we just want it to be empty, even though that won't be an option because of our data validation. So hit enter, and that's going to pop over and change to be our code for Jita. And if we go back over to the trade tab and we change this cell to be Amar, 
we should see that change reflected here and indeed we do it's changed to be the code for Amar so we're just going to copy this exact line of code over with the exception of changing the cell drop down to be by drop down here and exact same thing change from G to cell to G to buy and buy drop down over here just the same okay we just finished that up and now if we come over here to the trade window if we switch these from the G to buys say to the Amar buy and sell we should see those numbers changed in the math cell like we did for the first one and indeed it is working okay so the next thing that we need to do is name each of these so we're gonna name this one the top one will be the cell underscore swap and the bottom one will be the buy underscore swap and now we can use these as part of our math over here so for our new functions it's going to be a little bit interesting what we need is import new import XML command so equals import XML now as we know before we need a URL and a query uh, we've already gone over the query part we're gonna use the same one so I'll actually fill that out first and the query is going to be double forward slash cell slash min uh, for the cell and then over here on the URL we're gonna do something a little bit different than last time so we're gonna use the concat again concat concatenate with another parentheses however this time we're gonna be concatenating let me find my notes uh, we're gonna be concatenating cell swap with type ID okay and immediately after that we're gonna go ampersand join so that's a new command that requires an extra parentheses set so now we're up to three it's like inception for parentheses type ID uh, comma now we need to use cache symbols this time when we're going to specify a range and it's going to be b3 uh, that's a colon to cache b26 and that's going to specify a range you can see there it's created the green box for our range uh, and that should be it. Let me just double check. Yep, that looks good. So hit enter and we should get this first set of values back. And go ahead and copy this over to the second column here with the exception of we're going to change the cell swap here to be the buy swap. And we're going to change our query in XPath from cell min to be double forward slash buy forward slash max. And that should give us our buy prices and fill out the rest of the columns. So super easy what we've just done there and now we can switch these from Mar to Jita and it should automatically switch our cell group and show us that amount of data. Now the best part about doing it like this is what we can literally do is take this entire section because we've not used direct uh, references to cell numbers. We can take an entire region copy and paste it and I'm using in-game browser again for this episode so likely we'll see an error but for you, you're going to be able to copy and paste this without doing any editing or changing whatsoever and you can double up the size, triple it up, quadra, whatever you'd like. And in the end you can come up with hundreds of requests because we've gone 24 items per import XML command. So two per row once again for 24 items you need two commands so you can go up to 24 of these categories before you're even you know into the trouble area for your import XML query polls. So that's fantastic. Okay, last couple things I'm going to do. Number one is just change the conditional formatting rules a little bit from last episode. Uh, the pastels were okay, but I think it's a little bit better if they stand out even further. So on the less than zero, we'll go for a, sorry, white text on a bright red background. And then second rule, greater than, same as before, 0 0.05. Text can stay the same, but background we want bright green. And that's really gonna make everything stand out much better than those pastels. I think I much prefer that. And apart from that, I'm gonna go view. I'm gonna freeze two rows. And that's gonna keep our, uh, our titles and our naming up there while we scroll down the page. Also, we can switch when we're in the middle of the page. So I think that's a nice effect. And apart from that, Experiment yourselves guys. See if you can dig up the system IDs from the math tab and put a few more in. Add Jita, you know, add Renz, add Heck, whatever you like. Uh, just a short episode today guys to show you those last few tricks. Next week we're going to start with a new topic, so we're done with spreadsheeting for now. Hope you got another few good tips out of this one, and hopefully you can find some great uses for your new spreadsheeting techniques. Take care guys, stay tuned, thanks for watching.